All right, deck list. Deck yeah, list. yeah. Uh, I put them in the chat. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Kingsley and I are here, bringing you the last unicorn standing. We have Ida Idalinath versus Oryx Wild in a unicorn versus scorpion matchup, which I think is their second hardest matchup behind unicorn versus crab. I actually think crab, uh, I actually think crab is more unwinnable, but ju just because if, especially now that the Satoshi Karata District lists are coming up, like if Karata District flops versus unicorn, they actually just can't beat that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be real. I think that unless someone has come out with some great unicorn deck technology, uh, unicorn is bad in almost all matchups. So but, we have uh, we have Lenath playing Scorpion Splash with one Fate worse than death, two backhanded compliments. All uh, right, deck lists. Deck yeah, lists. yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. Okay, yeah, the unicorn yeah. crab is reasonable. The unicorn crab is reasonable. No, he's playing. Is that what he's, he's playing? playing he's not. He's playing. Maybe this is maybe this is the secret tech. Yeah. yeah. Back. Backhanded com what the heck? Yeah, two backhanded compliments, two calling in favors, two forged edicts. The forged edicts will be nice. I don't think this is the secret tech, but if it were, I would be excited. So is this a dishonor deck? Is that what we're seeing here? He has three for shames. Yeah, I think I think this is a dishonor deck. You just use you use spyglass and you use um Moto Juro and Ide Trader. The to... one thing I will say is that if this is a dishonor deck, I think he should swap his windswept yurts for Imperial Storehouses. Uh, but... I agree. It's possible that he's intentionally keeping his Imperial count low for a recursion uh, in order to get Mia Satoshi to mill him harder. We have Oryx is actually is he... playing a pretty standard deck, like for his for his standards, I guess. So this is Oryx is. Let's see here. He's just playing. He's just playing uh, just pretty standard Scorpion Splash Dragon. Yeah, so this is you know Scorpion Dragon. It's one of the it's one of the more drop bears oriented decks. He has two Kachikos and two Meek Informants, but he's not really or sorry, and two unassuming Yojimbos, but he's not really overdoing it like people used to. He's not doing he ten characters. Policy. He is playing both Policy Debate and I Can Swim, which is interesting. I think that's actually a strong combination. Yeah, he's shaved off of Hate Worse and Death. Only one, two Assassination, three, three Bonsai. Only only on two for shame. Yeah, so he is. He also has actually gone up to 41 conflict decks, so we uh, 41 conflict cards. So we see here a deck where we have a lot of different tricks, and I, what I immediately look to is, are you playing favored niece so that you can get rid of the ones that don't work? He is and we three. see that he is at 3x. He's also playing to Cloud the Mind, which not all Scorpions are doing at the moment. So I, I, I personally like Cloud the Mind a lot. Yeah, so I think it's a, I think it's quite a strong card. I, I also note that it is immune to. Harada District, which is quite important in the Crab matchup, which is one of the big matchups right now. Uh, Karata District, for those who don't know, requires you to... Uh, requ I believe that Karata District requires you to target an attachment on a character that the opponent controls. Correct. You cannot so use just... Kar you can't use Karata District on Cloud the Mind. Yeah. And similarly on Fiery Madness, though I think Fiery Madness has gone quite out of fashion these days. I agree. Um, with more, I mean, with less and less scorpions actually buying uh, Shoju, that's another. That, that was like the big combo, right? Like he he lets you do some really cool things. All right, so we have Nixon chat saying he's burning battery for this. Better be good. <laughs> All right, so looks like Lenath lost the die roll. Right. There we go. All right, so Lenath lost the die roll. Oryx Mulligan three from Dynasty. Lenath is only Mulligan one from Dynasty. Unicorn, you want to see Trader to Trader turn one only, against only one Fate Worse Than Death. Yeah, and we do see Trader Palace. That's very strong. Yeah. Okay. So in this situation, the the Trader he really wants to see one of those favored mounts for his Eda Trader. Yeah. So and if he, he has that, he can immediately start bidding low and just drawing a ton of cards. The question is, does he have favored mount? So there. Are, okay. So there are th there are three unicorn characters that would ever make me want to play unicorn. The first one is Eda Trader. Uh, I've highlighted him on the screen here. This character is nuts. Like, what he yeah. can do. He... Ha I read him, and I thought it was limit, like, maybe like a twice per turn of Spyglass. It's just once per conflict. If you can move him into all four conflicts and trigger it, he get he can just generate an absurd amount of value. 
Uh, the one uh, the one caveat that I'll say on Eden Trader is that you do have to um, you do have to have the combo with him. He yes. only works if you have other cards to enable him. Otherwise, he's like his ability might fire once, and it's not horrible, but it also requires contrived scenarios. Uh, we got Orcs Wild says that he misclicked his bid. I was going to say it's up to Lenath to determine whether or not he would like to take it back. I akin this to spinning your dial incorrectly in, f in physical match, which is a, re a reasonable thing. Oh, okay, so Orcs is saying he, he wants to bid five. Okay, yep. Uh, that's fine. So he's bidding five instead of yeah, four. Yeah, he did, he, did, he did message me before the reveal. Just, yeah, so he probably just misclicked it, uh, which makes sense. I also think that bidding five is pretty correct here. So, uh, so back to my soapbox. So we have Trader. Uh, Border Rider is the other one. Border Rider is very, very insane. Just action ready. Like, that's so strong. You said you had three. What's the third one? Is it uh, Moto Euro? It's Moto Moto. Is it Juro or Euro? I've heard it both ways. I don't know. Okay, so I, I'm just so yeah. M M Moto Euro is the other one. That card is awesome. Uh, I've seen I've seen some people go really hard on like I was watching I think it was Demagogue who was playing with uh, Finger of Jade and uh, Above Questions, and he just, just get the invincible Moto yeah, Euro. Yeah, he just like he just used Yurts to Yurt up and play like Moto Euro with like five fate and just like suited him up. If you can get Watch Commit on him, it becomes a big problem. Okay, interestingly, we're seeing a, a Weechi Wayfinder coming out. So um, he doesn't I... want to face plant something. It looks like so he reveals Shameful. So. I Does he even care about Shameful? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's not good, right? Like, is Orcs playing Cunning Magistrate? No, but... Yeah, that's right. I think he does have two Cunning Magistrate. Oh, no, he has Unassuming. Yeah, he was on Cunning Magistrate last season. Uh, it turns on your opponents for Shames. Like, it's, I don't know. I, I would prefer not to hit it. Like I think that the the ones that you really, really want to watch out for with the Ouija Wayfinder are cards like Restoration of Balance, Feast or Famine... That are just going to blow you up completely. Uh, and I actually think display. revealing pilgrimage is more important because that uh, you don't want to to blind walk into pilgrimage with a, a weak force. Often, yeah. If you're going, if your conflict is going for the ring effect in large part, then yeah, blind walking into pilgrimage is horrible. But we do sometimes see those situations where it's like this conflict is mainly oriented towards getting a. Uh, you know, this conflict's mainly oriented towards getting keepers out or whatever. In which case, all right. So we see, we see him go to a different province. He runs in a seeker cache, which is unfortunate. Um, it's not going to be a negative effect on his characters, but it will give Oryx the uh, ability to impulse his top five cards. Yep. So, Moto Moto Youth is kind of one of those cards that I like to, like, if you were to compare it to something, if you just compare this card to Matsu Berserker, it's very sad. Um, it has a zero, so it can be policy debated, and then it isn't always a three on military, <laughs> like Matsu Berserker is. Oh, yeah, it does, it does uh... have cavalry, though. Cavalry is pretty sweet. It does suffer. I think this is a card that suffers a little bit from. I suspect that the designers of this game thought that zero was upside compared to dash. I could see that. So, so. And I think it really is not most of the time. So we see. So we wow, Forge Edith coming out early to cancel a Miramoto's Fury in this case. This signifies he wants to break then? You could use the Unicorn Stronghold to move Yuchi Wayfinder? Yeah, or he just. Uh, yeah, that, that is strange. I would. Oh, maybe we see, we see a, a Counter Forge Edict. No, no, this is a different one. Oh, he he's charging Border he's... Rider. Yeah, he wanted to... Okay, charging Border Rider would have been a great play here. And then we see a second Miramoto's Fury. A second Fury. Miramoto's Fury. Are we going to see the Golden Plains Outpost used to send Weechi Wayfinder in? I would. win on this conflict. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, there we go. Yep, there it goes. So it's uh, a bit unlucky for the Unicorn player that he was not able to get that charge Border Rider. That would have been a sick play. Yeah, for sure, because then you can just ready... All right, all right, so... Lenath can just re-honor his traitor then and enable a Forge Edict again if he has his second one. Oryx does lose an honor, but this enables the Scorpion box now. 
So we should probably. I, I would probably. You probably box here on your first action just to make sure. No, no, he wants to be lower for the Yogo Oh, outcast. Yogo Outcast, I'm sure he had that. Yeah, yeah, so... Oh, so he dishonors Yogo Outcast instead of rehonoring Traitor. What do you think about this? Uh, I think it's very possible that he's actually going for the dishonor win here, so I think it does make sense. We see... Uh, the one thing that he has oh, to watch no. out for is that it does mean a potential I can swim. Ooh, we see Cloud the Mind on that Traitor. That's gonna that's gonna slow down Leonath's plans. Leonath doesn't it's... have uh, Fate right now for uh, calling in favors to move it. Yeah. Uh... On the other hand, he also doesn't have fate for favored mount, so Eda Trader is unlikely to actually use its ability this turn. That's fair. I actually think this may have been a little preemptive, though it is definitely the case that the uh, Eda Trader can Tra basically... Trader, Moto, Moto Juro, and, uh, and Border Rider are the, are the ones that you want to. Oh, yeah, wow, and he Border flipped, Rider is he a little Imperial sad. Palace on public forum, that's pretty sick. So we see a political earth conflict here. Um, if Leonath doesn't defend this, uh, we might see Oryx use the box because he's going to be below anyway. Or he's going to be tied, I guess. Mm. If you're Leonath, do you defend? It looks like he's going to. I don't know if I defend this. You're, you then give up a free void conflict? So we see a for shame Isn't bowing that? bowing the uh, the liar. I also yeah. I guess if you're not winning. Oh, and then we see we see policy debate between liar and traitor. Both players bid three. Very weird bidding. I would have fived. Though. I would have fived absolutely. If I'm Lena, I slam that five button. If my opponent bids anything but five, I either tie or I win. And like, if my opponent bids low and I lose honor to him, that's fine. He's scorpion. Like, we're he's his box will be turned off, and his Yoko outcast will be worse. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think the um, we do see. Uh, I think that yeah. I, I don't know why either player bid three in this circumstance actually. So if Oryx bids three, he goes to six. That would stop. <coughs> that would stop a four bid from Leenath. Like that, I don't know that. I that, think I. I think Leenath should have bid. Uh... I think Leenath okay, should have. Oh, actually, Leenath's bid of three makes a little more sense. So I think Leenath bid three. In case Orcs bid one. Yeah, because then he wins. Sure. And... I like I like one three or five if I'm Leenath. Orcs should just have or Orcs should have bid to win or bid one. Oryx bidding Oryx bidding three is more confusing to me than Leenath bidding three. But maybe he predict, you know, maybe he's, you know, winning the winning the Yomi the Yomi struggle here, so, and he's like, you know, my opponent's gonna bid three to try to beat my bid one, so I'm gonna bid three in order to <laughs> barely beat him. Yeah, I guess. You know, if you have those reads, the soul you read, can be, <coughs> you can be in a pretty strong position. So the reason I don't like defending the political attack over the military attack is Bonsai gives is is a is a much easier card to put in the conflicts than like political buffs. So now we're gonna get an unopposed <coughs> military attack and we can see a break we can see a potential break or if he attacks public forming and it will be a half break. Uh Leon has, let's see if Leon's running endless planes. Ooh meditations that's a that's, that's a an one. unfortunate one for orcs. So Leonath is not playing uh he's not playing endless planes. He's playing Rally to the Cause, which is probably under his stronghold. He is playing Pilgrimage, Meditations, Public Forum and Manicure Garden in his row. Okay. Uh, Oryx is on an entrenched position on his on his uh, stronghold. So he breaks with a bonsai, it looks like. The, and uh, just to get on my soapbox for a moment, this really is why we wish, why I wish at least, that they had decided to allow the province mulligan that we were talking about earlier, because these games where it's totally understood what provinces like what's going to be somebody's stronghold and so on are a little dull. Like I do think there's an interesting element of the game that we don't see, we don't really see coming to fruition in these games like, simply because of that uh the open deck list system. To to be fair, I I think I personally don't have a problem with it because it, in in magic uh in top cuts deck lists are open also. Oh, so I don't have a, I don't have a big problem with it, but I do think that the game would be cooler without it. Okay, I I can I can I can 
follow that logic. Um, yeah, it's way less like this is awful and more like they might be missing an opportunity. It's, it, yeah, it's not that it's awful, it's that it could be better, right? Yeah. Because right. I actually think this is quite a fun and interesting game, all things So we considered. see Moto Euro, another trader, and an Otaku Infantry. Otaku Infantry might actually be the best one drop in the game. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, no, Doom I... Shigenja, duh. Yeah, Doom Shigenja... Doom Shigenja or maybe Bayushi Liar. Yeah, li really Liar's up there. Uh, I actually think it's better than Matsu Berserker. Yeah, Matsu Berserker's also conceivably up there, but I think... I think Liar fits into the game, the Scorpion game plan just as well as Matsu Berserker fits into the Lion game plan, and then Liar does give you a card. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, I would say it's those two. I like this card can just get some get some absurd numbers. So Leon spits five, Oryx spits five. He does have a manipulator, so he goes to six, and then steals back. So. Oryx just only has one more cloud than mine, so we could definitely see... I think Lena's had a calling in favors in his hand also. So, his hand currently is Fate Worse Than Death, Calling in Favors, Policy Debate, Talisman, and then five unknown cards now. So, this trader could generate some fate for Fate Worse Than Death. It's not very good right now against any of these creatures. Or, uh, characters? Mm hmm It's also dangerous to play against, uh, Forged Edict. Yep. Okay, let's take a look at the... Let's take a look at the overall situation here. Who do you think is up right now? I think... I think Scorpion is up based on the policy debate. Because they know they have information. Like, I think it's a very slight advantage to Scorpion right now. Yeah, so I think that the, the Unicorn player actually has a considerably stronger board, in my opinion. But the Scorpion player does have information and does have a break. So it's kind of... I don't think it's certain one way or the other, but I do think that at this phase I lean towards. I, 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 I would say Scorpion. I, like if if I had, if I could like s slide like a little bar over, I would slide it over slightly in Oryx's favor. Yeah. What what card did he take from the policy debate again? He it took was, was uh, Spyglass. Spyglass. Okay. Well, the other thing is that Lenath still needs an enabler for his Eda Trader. It's not good unless you draw the support elements that it needs. So is he playing Seal of the Unicorn? I know that was... No, he just has two favored mounts. No, he has two Seal of the Unicorns. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, so Seal of the Unicorn is considerably worse than favored mount for Eda Trader because it, uh, the favored mount will get you into another conflict every turn. But it has the advantage of being free, and there's some upside in other situations because uh, it... it can be used though he's not playing I am ready. There's this sort of fringe thing where it gives you the unicorn state. Oh which lets sure. You play I am ready on your Mia Satoshi. That's but fine. because he's not playing I am ready, that's not relevant. It's mostly just for a zero cost way to make your trader into a and your trader and your Satoshi into unicorn cavalry. Yep. Just use that. You know, unicorn has one of the weakest strongholds. I think it's fair to say. Uh, I would agree. I think it's. I think its effect. I think its effect can be strong. But it's not always good, and it's not always on, which is the problem. Like, it has a trait restriction, it has a conflict restriction, and it has no strength. Like, there's just like yeah, three big knocks against it. A lot of bad, a lot of bad faction factors combined. So we see a first shame after a fan gets played. Yeah, the unicorn stronghold has both the worst stats, just in terms of numbers, with ten starting honor and zero bonus strength, and then also a very conditional ability. So Which is to say it does nothing, but it's not great. We saw an assassination on the, on the manipulator, and then we see a policy debate. Oryx bids 5, Lenath bids 2, and then loses his own policy debate. I have to imagine you're, you're gonna, your opponent's going to bid 5, is going to 5 bid you here. And then there's the other cloud, the mind. After taking calling in favors with the policy debate. Jeez, that's brutal. Orcs wins the conflict. Does not break. 
Gonna probably dishonor the trader, the other trader now. Yep. I think Leneth has played both of these policy debates incorrectly, and I think that's so far the big the big uh, discrepancy in the game. Wow, yeah, losing your own policy debate is really something that should not be happening. Next thing, he would have left calling in favors, and then saying calling in favors on Cloud the Mind is a win. Uh, kind of, like, Eden Trader is, like, one of the ways that he can win this game, right? Like, that's, like, the only, that's, like, his, his way to generate card advantage. We do have to worry for, or we do have to look out for a backhanded compliment. Like, if we see the, the honor turtles drop like they normally do, we could just see double backhanded compliment end the game. Yeah, it's true, but he does not have it in hand yet. And he runs into meditations with his other trader, which is really awkward. Contesting air ring, interestingly, I would I would have contested water here, I think. Yeah, I do think that Lena's bidding strategy for these policy debates has not been paying off. Especially after Oryx bid somewhat heavily in the previous debate. I guess the previous one was... Yeah. Well, so he's afraid of... So if he 5 bids and Oryx 1 bids, he goes to 3 honor. But I think after you see your opponent's hand, you can then challenge the air ring, right? Like, and then... You can also, like... Yeah. There comes... Uh... Oryx let goes Talisman of the Sun... And Which saves the break. So, Lena so, decides to take an honor. Both of these traders have Cloud the Mind on them, and I actually don't agree with that, because they aren't enabled yet. Yeah, I think I think they're being played, to, the Cloud the Minds were played too early. Yeah, I think that, uh, also, Lena kind of went for a bold play playing those traders with heavy feet investments without enablers. Hmm. I don't think two fate is heavy fate is that heavy. Like if he got if he gone up to three, I think then it, it it becomes a real big investment. I think three th I think three drops with two fate is pretty standard. Yeah, I just mean I don't play traitor at all unless I have an enabler for it. Like That's I just fair. legitimately won't play it unless I know I can get him. So going. on like turn one, he just plays border rider instead, probably. Yeah. Uh, I guess turn one he played it to have a courtier. Mm, that's a good point. He did have that forged edict. All right, so we see the other trader getting voided here. We're going to see an earth conflict here at meditations. So both players are just not defending. We're just like, honor totals are plummeting. So if Oryx doesn't defend this, he's going to go to four. Leonath will lose down to five. Oh, but we see charge on Shoju to defend. And that, that'll that be... All right, so he, op op opinion time. <coughs> You're... Opponent is attacking you with the Earth Ring. You have no way to defend other than to play Charge. So, and if you play Charge, you'll win, guaranteed. So, do you pay one Fate and a card to prevent your opponent from drawing a card and you discard, discarding a card at random? I think it's. Uh, it depends on situational factors. I think it's extra worth it in situations where the Imperial favor is also at stake. Uh, it is not in this scenario because Leonath already has a has a win. So, uh yeah it is. No it isn't. It's it'll be four to three. Oh right, he has the palace. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I actually I, I didn't realize that he had the palace there for a moment, so I was thinking it was between three one or two two. Yeah. So I think you know that's a I think it's as you say I'm not sure that playing the charge is great, especially if he did have that forged edict that we saw to cancel the bonsai. I think it's reasonable to just ha hold off on that. We do see Does the. Does have a bonsai? Uh, Linath played a bonsai, but it was cancelled via, uh, Forged Edict. Oh, oh, it was, okay. Yeah, and he had it when, uh, during that second policy debate. Yeah, by, by usually order to cancel bonsai, okay. Yeah, so I do think that this, um... So, so we see Moto Euro with only one fate. I don't like that. Yeah, I think, no, I, yeah, I... I'm not. I'm not fond of that. I would have yurted first, and then just played Moto Euro with more fate. 
Or well, so here, yeah, it, wait, actually, this really doesn't make sense, because he'll be able to get two fate from the water ring here, which he actually wants to go for also, in order to bow that Shoshi illusionist. Yeah, agreed. So I think this is kind he of He also knows where Shameful Display is, so he can attack, he can attack Pilgrimage. Once again, both players bid three. Some interesting bids this game. If Lenath has, has hit a Spyglass, he really needs to get it out to get that card draw going. Well, it's like really awkward to put it on a one faded character, right? This is also awkward if he if he goes and attacks goes and attacks pilgrimage, and orcs has fate worse than death, then he just gets blown out, right? Like you just fate worse than death, you know? Yeah, fate worse than death is gonna. Well, he only has the one copy though. Yeah, I mean, it's still, like Leonath only has only has one, and he drew it. Like I mean, yes. oh well, we're gonna see a, get a peek at Leonath's hand here. Meek Informant shows up with Soshiro Miyako in play. So, Leenath chooses to discard a random, discards Favored Mount. Oh, Favored Mount came out too late for Leenath so there. We have so, he has Fate Worth Death, Cav Reserves, Fan, Favored Mount. Yeah, this is also the awkward puzzle with Eda Trader, is that Favored Mount is kind of a bad card a lot of the time. Agreed. But you still want it just to enable the trader, so then you find yourself in these weird situations like this. On the plus side, the Favored Mount could be used to bring the Utaku infantry we, into a conflict. We could see military... <clears throat> military water and then cal cavalry reserves will be on. What uh, what can he get with cavalry reserves? That would be hype. So he can, so his cavalry. Oh, this is a conflict deck. Cavalry reserves can get border rider plus moto youth. That's it. That's actually so that's three for uh, cost for only three strength, which is kind of bad. Yeah, the fact but that he actually played moto Juro game. is really awkward. It means he can't cavalry reserves his other moto moto Juro. Yeah, that's true. Uh, though he could do a crazy combo where he does Cav Reserves, he uses his Yurt for money, and then he uses the Ataku Infantry to move in with a, a large amount of strength for three Unicorn characters, but that's still not what so you want to So he does run into Pilgrimage. Uh, if Oryx has Fate Worse Than Death here, you can just first action Fate Worse Than Death. Yep, no doubt. He doesn't have any Courtiers. If I'm if I'm Lenath, I Fate Worse Than Death this, this Miyako. Oh, he doesn't, he's one short. He's one short. We see a Fury... Do you yurt for money here and then fate worse than death this guy? Oh no, that would give Oryx fate worse than death if he had it. Alright, so... Oryx... Oryx plays the third fury. Lena says classic three fury This is hand, why, uh... A so little bit of salt there, perhaps. He's not going for the... He is not... My, my bad, Nyx. Not going for that play with the... Favored mount, probably because this is pilgrimage and a win is not relevant here. So, Did all the, so is this is this game the last hurrah of unicorn? By the way, in this league, this is this is the last available unicorn. If unicorn loses this, they will be out of out of the league or out of the cup for for this. I season. think this is the first time unicorn has even made it to the cup, but unfortunately, it does look like we unicorn. had three we had three unicorns. Look, I'm not ready to write them, write him off yet. I I trust my boy Leenath. Uh, yeah, I, I meant, uh, I think this is the first, um, I think in Seasons 1 and 2, no Unicorns reached the cup, though I could be wrong. Agreed, no, you're, you're correct. So, yeah, Joe from Cincinnati defeated Quindo in a pretty brutal game. Uh, Brundum beat Lenka. And then now we're seeing Oryx versus Lenath. so if Lenath does manage to pull this out, he will be the only Unicorn to win a a cup game in all three seasons of the Discord League. Yep. Uh, next season, we, this upcoming season that's being played, so the Season 4 Cup will have a lot of Unicorns, because a lot of uh, people have played Unicorn in this in this uh, league. Yeah, that's right. So this this is this is some data. Like, people were, were saying they wanted data. We're going to get it. We're going to get it from, from the group stats plus the cup stats. Interestingly, there have, uh, there have been... There are a there lot are of strong only, players who are playing Unicorn, too. There are only three Unicorn and only four Dragons. And all the Unicorns have lost so far, and all the Dragons have won so far. We'll it's see just if uh, Chaley, right? Wow, he, he, the fate worse than death is hit by the random discard from that Earth Ring. That's a really unfortunate development for Leenath. Feels unlucky. I do wonder why he didn't go for the Void Ring here, though. Yeah, Void off Moto, Moto Juro. I, I absolutely go, I go Military Void here. Military Void at Meditations. So is he going to scout the Shameful Display here? I think he should. It does, it, does this... Does uh, Infantry have a... Infantry has a Glory. 
Yeah, but the um oh, this is political. Oh, it's a, no, it's a political. Yeah. No, then you then you do then you do scout the shameful display. Why? Because you have favor. Oh, I was thinking the the informant would not be able to block. I actually don't think you want the shameful just for the ring trigger. Well, you you still get it because you have favor, so you'd be one to one. No, I'm sorry, not not for the ring trigger for the uh, province trigger because the honor situation, like losing an honor and giving your opponent an honor, is bad enough. So we see no defense. So we see a fan with an attempt to break here, and we do see a break. Okay. Voids Miyako. Oryx says that was a mistake. I don't know if he's referring to his player to Lena. No, I, th I think he was referring to his own to just his not blocking. Hopefully, it would be a bit. Uh... Yeah, a bit BM to just tell your opponent that was that's a mistake, bro. Lenath asks a question. We'll see if Oryx clarifies. All right, so if I'm Oryx here, or oh wow, he was talking about Lenath's play, man. Oryx with the insults. He says never break the meditations unless you have to. I disagree with that. If if I'm trying so to, so is the most farmable of the current provinces. Look, I'm trying to win by I'm trying to win by conquest here, right? Like, I mean, what what are we what are we doing? What are we doing if we're, if we're not trying to win by conquest? So or Oryx is just giving up on conquest. Going to go for airing. This is going to put Lenath down to two honor, but we can just have Lenath the yurt up. Oryx still still. Haunting Lena oh, uh, here with these remarks. So, so Matrim is clarifying in the chat here, saying that uh, Unicorn did make the Season 2 Cup, but no one supplied, it was in the wild card, and no one supplied deck lists. So that, so oh, got it. it. Okay, so they kind of de facto forfeited the uh, their, their chance, wild yeah. card. The, uh, just a little bit of clarification. In this league, there's supposed to be a wild card tournament for people who, didn't, who came close to making it but didn't make it. But... Uh, in all seasons so far, extenuating circumstances have caused the wildcard tournament to not actually be played. And just some number of the people who submitted, or I think maybe all the people who submitted got in because once it was on a holiday weekend and I don't know what happened the other time. All right, Lenath down to three honor, Oryx down to five honor, Moto Euro facing off against Shisuro Miyako. We'll see what happens next. Uh, is he going to use his windswept yard? Nix is giving BM lessons to Lenath, so he says Lenath should come back with, if I need lessons, I'll ask someone else. Wow. See, Nix knows what's up. Nix knows how to trash talk. That's my, that's my boy. All right, so we see Nice, we see Satoshi. So Satoshi can be big here because Lenath does have cav reserves. Or did he get discarded? Nope, still has it. Yeah, Lenath could really use milling some more characters for that cav reserves. That would be very strong. And we are seeing him also bring out the infantry. That's fine. I think, I think bringing the infantry is fine. Yeah, so Lenath can use his windswept. Did he not use his yurt last turn? He did not. That I would have yurted so for honor last turn. He also didn't use Mia Satoshi. He didn't use Mia Satoshi despite the opponent passing first? I'm not sure I agree with that. So Oryx passes, uh, Oryx passes with... And then uses favorite needs to discard I can swim. Both players bid two. They are really in sync this game. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think I would have definitely not getting the passing fate. So if, if my opponent passes, I absolutely use Mia Satoshi. And then I we see Spyglass on Mia Satoshi. Are we gonna see a let go or a calling in favors here? City of Lies, so I think we're going to see calling in favors. Alright, so 
Calling in favors does come out. Discards Miyako for the Spyglass. Uh, interestingly, he could have just gone to the Nice to uh, just have it long, have the Spyglass around for longer. But we see Miyako coming in, going to get a trigger off the Spyglass to replace the Calling in favors. So that's like a net positive play because he didn't spend any fate on the Calling in favors. So he traded. It's actually uh, he's actually up a card. He two, he two for one. Because he gained a card, he gained a card, used a card, and Leonath lost a card. So we see military. We see him contesting the firing. Motojiro is going to defend here. We're going to see a bonsai from Oryx. So he yurts now, for to give fate. Oh, he needed it for... He needs it for cab reserves. He needs the two fate for cab reserves. Alright, so... Cab reserves right now still doesn't have... He needs to use Mia Satoshi. He doesn't have enough cavalry in his graveyard to use... To use uh, cavalry reserves properly. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't do it already, to be frank. Um, so if he uses a Mia Satoshi, he can, he can't hit a palace? What can he hit? Boy, having that Spyglass stolen must really sting for the Unicorn player here. So we see, Wins we see, uh, Meek Informant coming in, it's gonna trigger Miyako. Oh, it's so risky, you, you can't choose discard at random. Cav reserves, favored mount, and court game. Mia Satoshi fires, uh, revealing another Mia Satoshi. I yeah, think this it, is definitely one of those situations where you find yourself wishing that you had uh, yeah, imagine done you had that done during that Dynasty. In, in Dynasty, yeah. So now we have Shinjo ult on Sarnai in the graveyard. Uh, we flipped a second. Actually, this Cavalry Reserves will be sick here. Double Border Rider, double Moto Youth. I I mean, I, I go for it here. If if I, I Cavalry Reserves here for double double Youth, double double Border Rider. and Yeah, that's actually amazing. And then, and then, uh, if it doesn't get countered, I can move Moto Euro home. Yeah, that's a that's actually a fantastic play here. It will give you two border riders for the rest of this turn. I would definitely go for that. I would, I would go for Cavs yeah. right here. Like that's the only. Way. I think that's that's my 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 chance to win this game. Especially because if you don't, the Shisoro actress is going to steal one of the border riders. Agreed. He does not. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if he doesn't see it or if he doesn't care about this conflict or what, but I don't think that's a good development for Linath here. And he, with his characters getting dishonored, he could, he could be going for a break, right? So he just goes Otaku Infantry Military. Uh, you do Otaku Infantry Military a Pilgrimage, and you just go for the big break. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, he actually has a pretty good shot of breaking Pilgrimage with that attack. Like Orcs invested a Bonsai into not breaking. Yeah. You could do... Not yearning for honor is really scary though, but I guess I guess he needed the fate though. Nick saying he can spell the forged edict through the screen. Uh, Oryx has already used two forged edicts, so I mean he's only got one left. He's seen he's seen slightly over half the deck, so I mean if I'm Leanath here, I'm playing I'm playing the odds, and it's less likely for my opponent to have drawn the third one. It's very reasonable for him to have done it, but I'm go I need I, you know I'm playing unicorn here. I need to take my risks. You can't live in fear all the time. He attacks Shameful Display. Interesting. I don't think I would have done this because now this niece is going to go up to four. Interesting. So we see Shameful being used. Golden Plains Outpost moves Moto Juro in, but shouldn't shouldn't he be at two, or be at one? At one. Oh, maybe because it moved the the status hasn't updated here. 
Yeah, there it is. Cav one. Reserves get canceled with Forged Edict. That is a revolting development. Please! For Unicorn! <laughs> wow, Oryx Wild says all the answers and smiles. He really is hitting the BM hard. Yeah, alright, well. That's... Brutal. So, I think that Cav Reserves would have actually put Unicorn into a decent position here. I think he should have but... attacked Pilgrimage. He sh I don't think he should have attacked Shameful Display. Now now he's in a really bad spot, because this, this underneath is actually a Wrecking Ball. Yep. This is a, uh, yeah, I think he should have gone for the Pilgrimage, and I think he's in desperate trouble now. Uh, I think there's a good chance that he's going to lose. I think actually it's almost certain that he's going to lose an air ring. That'll be another honor. And then with his dishonored characters leaving play soon, he's going to be really, really stuck. He needs to hit another yurt. Yeah, yurt for honor to save him. <laughs> Proposition Dirk in chat's hitting me with told you so. Look, Dirk, I'm a dreamer here. I'm a dreamer. We're rooting. I'm rooting for Unicorn. All yeah, I'm. I'm very state. openly rooting I know for this Unicorn. This makes me like a, a bad, bad commentator because I'm not impartial. But Unicorn has been st struggling so hard that I really want them to be doing. I really want them to be doing better. Yeah. And I'm hopeful when I see these new decks uh, using approaches that I haven't tried before and uh, various things that I haven't seen. But somehow Unicorn always has a way of coming back to disappoint me. Look, come on, man. My, my, my goal here... Okay, so we see... We see Oryx a... also, to be fair, has in fact had really good draws this game. Yeah, obviously that doesn't help. So we see... Political on Void. <laughs> Dirk says also, he... despite the BM, I do think Oryx is right. I do think that Breaking Meditations was bad. I think this is going to be a Dishonor game and not a Stronghold game. Reasonable. And we're, I think we're he, I think that. you should have I think you should have scouted shameful then on that turn to deny the seeker fate and then also flip it up. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm really not chatty at all in my games when I like on Jigoku. I, I I just play the game. Like if people, like I get people typing to me all the time. I just don't I just don't type. So, Leaneth loses an honor for not defending. I think Leaneth's going to go for an airing here, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, Oryx makes a mistake and removes it from Mia, said Hoshi, I think. Or is he lulling him into a false sense of security? Who knows? Are we going to see fate worse than death on Mia, said Hoshi, here? Do, does he have fate worse than death? That would be really unfortunate for him to have that on top of everything else. He can't have a fury. He's already used all three. Uh, it charges offline because it's a political conflict. Oh, actress, of course. Duh. So this is just preventing their break at this point. We can see her for shame here. That'd be really unfortunate. Uh, as to run, uh, Oryx is not playing Mono No Oare. Let's see here. In conflict characters. Or Oryx won the conflict. Loses the favor now. Four to four to three. Oh god, it's not going. Losing oh, no. the favor while you had the Imperial Palace is really a good sign that the game is gone gone south. Now I will say, uh, Oryx is going to be pretty low on honor himself. 
So we're going to see two honor to two. There is, a ch there is a chance of some wild reversal here and a dishonor win. Okay, so here's the dream. Um, dream scenario, Leenath draws... Uh, so he has one draw. So the dream back, scenario back here... Compliment. Yeah, Leenath draws... The, the dream involves backhand a compliment. Yeah, so this is, here's the dream. The dream is... Leenath wins. I he should discard this Mia Satoshi. The uh, he's not the game is not going another turn. Oh, Swift Magistrate's pretty sick. So here's the dream. Leenath wins the first conflict. So Leenath draws one card and it's backhanded compliment and he wins an air ring and then Oh, but if he wins the air ring, the Scorpion Stronghold gets enabled. It's gonna be really hard for Leenath to pull this out. Uh he win an Earth Ring and then oh you know you can't double backhand a combo because the Scorpion Stronghold. God, Scorpion Stronghold is insane. Oh, oh uh okay, here's the dream. No, wait, no, no, wait a minute. The dream he can win the air ring and oh, then he has the no, first Nyx has action because he's first. Nix has it. Attack attack air. Fate worse than death, soul defender for unopposed. Yeah, or um he can also He should play so yeah, Swift, Swift Magistrate is sick here. So he can if he wins this conflict. Um, so if he wins this conflict, so with the Swift Magistrate, I do question the Mia Satoshi dupe even more, but that's fine. No, you just so don't put Mia Satoshi in on that conflict. Leenath bids two. Why does he bid two? So assassination, he just dies to assassination now? I think... Oh, he, he... can't, or he can't play assassination, duh. Okay, so, uh, I think he's lost. Oh, now. yeah, Handsome Dan points out that, uh, he can't favor some death. Yeah, so I think bidding two is I think bidding two is really really dubious here. Um, he might have been pre anticipating that Oryx would bid two to try to enable the stronghold. In which I, I bet that's what it was. I well, bet no, I, I, I want Oryx to stronghold because then you can air ring backhanded for win. Right. So the question is, did he draw backhanded? Wait, 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 why is he putting me as Satoshi in with Swift Magistrate? I don't know. Yes, I think no, he's, please. He's misplayed that situation very significantly. He shouldn't even have. So he should have discarded the Mia Satoshi duplicate. He also should have used Mia Satoshi, which I think he forgot to do. And he also shouldn't even have used the duplicate. No, he Swift used Mia Satoshi. He hit Swift Magistrate. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because he had already flipped one Swift Magistrate, so he still has a second one. Please, Leenath, don't do this to me. Don't put don't put Mia Satoshi in with the Swift Magistrate. I, I think one fate of Mia Satoshi is fine. You just don't put him in this conflict. Yeah. Like, it's not that well, big. I, I think this game is going to end this turn. So, well, yeah, it's uh, going to end this turn, but, like, it, it, I don't know. It protects him from the water ring. Like, what are you, what, what you going to flip in that spot? No, he did it! Big mistake there. He takes Seeker Cash also. Oh, yeah, no. I don't... Ugh. I think... So, if... Okay, Orcs can't play Assassination. Orcs I mean, that says the, the Dao attack was indeed a mistake, and I think that's been amply vindicated by these results. Um... So, Leenath is initiated with three because Mia Satoshi does not contribute. He has the option to move Shinjo Outrider into the conflict to go up to five. Oryx defends with Nice, but Nice doesn't contribute? What? Wave the Scorpion, Dishonor Swift Magistrate. Move Shinjo Outrider into the conflict. Seeker Cash is breaking. Wait, why do you want to break here? It doesn't... Who cares? The game's going to end on Dishonor. Uh, I think... Yeah, I think... Leenath is... I think Leenath's overall strategy oh, is... Oh, and he was by Ushikata. Here. Wait, he puts Kachikoen with Fate! Oh, he's just going to kick out... He just kicks out the Magistrate then. Okay. Uh... He has to kick yeah. out the Magistrate. You have to kick Magistrate out if you put Fate on Kachiko. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why anyone's putting Fate on him. Characters here, honestly. 
And so she's going to kick out Magistrate. He's going to win this air ring, and Lenath will die to dishonor. That seems to be the long and short of it. Uh, if he has a move, yeah, he has that favorite mount. Oh, that's sick! Does Orcs have a light so go? The oh, no! Oh, let no! Go. That would have been so good! Yep. Lena says, of course, Look, though, to be fair, Orcs could have just played Kachiko without fate. Like, I yeah. don't think that's... To, I don't think that's what you that said about. To be fair, Scorpion did draw incredibly, incredibly well this game. But... Unicorn hasn't played perfectly, and so I... I will not... Like, it's like if Unicorn played perfectly and just didn't, didn't draw as well, that's a different story. But we have not seen that. Yeah, Dan's point. Dan's pointing out that if you the dream was you put yourself at one honor, win the air ring, and then double backhand a compliment, because the stronghold will never have a chance to be on. That's that was that was the line. Yep, and there's the water ring honoring or readying Kachika, and that is going to be the game. If I if I have backhand a compliment, I backhand a compliment myself here. I go out on my own terms. Do it, Lena. Backhand a compliment yourself. Oh, nope, he's just going to die to uh, unopposed. And that's the game. Yep, that's the game. Alright, well, the Unicorn Dream is dead. Unicorn, uh, you know, Unicorn fought bravely. I do think that Oryx did have all the answers this in this game, but, uh, and he points it out himself, a lot of what I needed when I needed it, but, uh, at the end of the day, we are forced to confront the fact that Unicorn has once again failed to win any games. At least they got some people in, though, baby steps. Yeah. You know, this yeah, time, you know, first ones, nobody makes the nobody makes the cup. Uh, like, I think first league, just nobody made it. Then second league, which I think was the first one with the wild card, uh, the people who, the person who made it from wild card didn't submit. And then this league, they made it through the wild card, and they started actually playing games, and they lost them. So with these baby steps, next league, next league, we'll see a unicorn win in top sixty-four at least. Oryx is pointing out that um, he needs a bit more experience. That Lenath needs more experience running pure dishonor. Breaking meditations was a big deal because you can't break your safe province. He broke meditations because it was free, but for the rest of the game, he just had too much control and information. I think that's pretty accurate here. All right. Um, so I actually have um, another match like immediately, like that can start right now. Do you? Oh, yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to cast it? Uh, sure. Let me just grab some food. Yep. Go ahead. But I'm yeah. yeah I'm it'll totally be fine. it'll be Kira mode versus Ogre's on, which will be Crab versus Lion. Alright, so I'm actually just not even going to turn the stream off because the game can actually, uh, we, we can just wait for that game to start. Yep. And we, 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 I got my, I got my viewers. The funny thing is Oryx says that he got both his Cloud the Mines exactly when he needed them. I actually think that's I wrong. I agree. I think, yeah, I disagree. I think he played them unnecessarily in both cases, especially given his hand knowledge. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead and grab some food. I'll let them know. Yeah, I'm gonna mute, and I will be back in a bit with to co-cast the second game. Yep.
right, so uh, while Kings is getting food, we have a little bit of time to talk about decklist here. So Kira mode here is running, um, running Lion Crane. So he's running Noble Sack, Admit Defeat, Political Rival, and Steward of Law as his Crane Splash. We see he is also on Mia Satoshi with two Implacable Magistrates, two Implacable Magistrates, and Satoshi dupes. He's on three Koma Ujiaki with the Imperial Palace, and I actually like this deck a lot. Like, if you're not gonna run Dragon Splash, I really do like, I really do like Crane Splash. We do see him only. He's on three Policy Debate, and we see two Way of the Lion. So this is an interesting Lion build for sure. Uh, we'll see if it works out. Uh, Noble Sacrifice is very good against Crab. So we'll see if that comes into play. So for the crab side, we see we see that crab here is on three funeral pyre. Funeral pyre is a card that has been fa phased out pretty pretty handily in favor of Imperial Storehouse. If you're not playing Yasuki Taka, it's really awkward to play funeral pyre. Um, crab is on two assassination. Three Bonsai, three Charge, three Court Games, three Rebuild, three Mountain, three Way of the Crab. Pretty standard stuff here. He's only on two Spyglasses, though. He's dropped a Spyglass for a Talisman. I don't agree with that. Oh, I need to cut this for the VOD. Uh, 